Well, welcome back. This is part two of specific heat. We're going to start um, talking specifically about some problems. Uh, first one says, how much heat does it take to raise the temperature of a 400 gram aluminum with a specific heat of 0.9 joules per gram Kelvin uh, pot from 25 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius? Well, if you remember, our equation, our equation is MC delta T. Q in this case is what we're trying to find because it says how much heat. So Q, well actually it's a list of what I have here. My mass is 0.4 kilograms. I went ahead and moved the decimal three spots. C turns out to be 0.9 joules uh, per gram degree Kelvin. My change in temperature is from 25 to 80. So we have a temperature change here of 55 degrees. What becomes then is the mass becomes 0.4, C is 0.9, and delta T is 55. When you multiply that, let me change to put those numbers in the calculator, you get a energy that is 19.8 joules. That's how much heat, that's how much energy. Remember, they're the same thing. Let's go ahead and pause it here for a short bit and give you a chance to uh, do the second problem. All right, we're back. Um, if I were to list these off here, in this case, they tell me that Q is 10,000. It's 10,000 joules of heat or energy. Uh, they don't give me, or they do give me the mass. Again, that's 0.6 kilograms. The specific heat in this case is what we want to find and the change in temperature is 90 to 10 or 80. So, going straight into my equation here, I get 10,000 equals 0.6 times C, which I don't know what it is yet, times 80. And with some simple math, we get C equals 208.3 and my units on this would be joules per gram degree Celsius. Last time it was, I should have been Celsius up here as well. Remember, a Kelvin and a Celsius, they're the same unit of, of temperature change, so we can use them interchangeably on here. All right, the next thing I'll tell you here is heat transfer now. So we, whether it's done by convection, conduction, or radiation, there's these two objects, and there's been There's these two objects, and there's been this transfer of heat, whether it's through radiation, whether it's been done con by conduction or convection, there's been this heat transfer from one object to the other. Quite often, it's through some type of cooling device and something that's hot, material X. Well, the question says how much lead, the specific heat at 95 degrees, um, at 95 degrees, added to 230 grams of water at temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. The mixture comes to thermal equilibrium at 32 degrees Celsius. What is the mass of the lead? Well, that's going to be over here. Basically, this turns into a very simple equation. This is the water. Um, what we come to find out is that uh, water um, has a specific heat of 4,186. The mass of the water is 0 0.230. If I change that into kilograms, the change in temperature is the water was at 18 degrees. They both come to thermal equilibrium at 32 degrees. So it was a change in temperature of 14 degrees. Equals the specific heat. Of the lead. Well, well, we've kind of did something here, and we're just going to go with it. I converted this to gram or to kilograms up here in this problem. Um, notice that the units are in grams. I'm going to have to convert this to a specific heat for kilograms, and all that does, all that is then, is moving the decimal three spots to the right. 
um, in class will go over that. Remind me and see if maybe you can come up with what, why we're moving at three spots to the right when I go from grams to kilograms. But this would be a specific heat of 130 um, per kilojoules per kilogram degree Kelvin. My mass is what we don't know. The change in temperature, it goes from 95 down to 18. So our change in temperature here is 77. Now at this point, what we do is we'll take and multiply the one side. And on the one side, I'm going to get a really large number, 13,000. 478.9 is equal to 130 and times 77. And what we get then, hold on, what we get then is a mass that's equal to 1.3 kilograms. One last thing I want to go over here with you then. And that is the heat of fusion. What this comes down to then is the heat of fusion is how much heat is necessary to require, or how much heat is necessary to change state, whether it's going from a liquid to a solid, from a solid to a gas. There's a certain amount of energy that needs to be attained or lost um, for it to change state. It takes a certain amount of energy to get those particles to vibrate enough where they no longer attach to each other. Or it takes a certain amount of energy it has to lose for the particles to come back together. And that kind of comes back to some of the chemistry things you guys talked about. Uh, but we'll go into that in, in class. Um, the more mass, the more heat required. What we find out is that it's a really simple equation. The amount of energy is equal to the mass times this latent heat, the amount of heat it takes per kilogram. So, heat... Is equal to mass times this latent heat. And our first problem says how much heat is required to melt 300 grams of ice at zero degrees Celsius? Well, it's going to take a certain amount. Even though it's already at zero, it's going to continue to still need energy to keep if, to keep melting. If if it's at zero, it doesn't get more energy. It's going to stay put. It will not freeze. So let's figure this out. My mass is. 0.3 kilograms. And I haven't given you that off yet for water, have I? Just a second. All right, I'm back. Um, the specific heat is 0.335 joules per kilogram when it comes to water melting or freezing. This is how much energy it takes per kilogram. Uh, 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 to make that conversion. So, in this case, the heat that's required is equal to the mass of 0.3 times this latent heat of 0.335. I'm sorry, it's not 0.335. I uh, did that wrong as well. For a kilogram... So that's not right either. I'm sounding really stupid right now, but oh well. You have that when you make videos. There's what I want. And when we multiply these two together, we get 100.5 joules. So my apologies our latent heat for water that would be freezing or um, thawing would be at 335 joules per kilogram. 
Let's take a second here and give you a chance to do this, the last one. Alright, what I've done here is I went ahead and added the equation for you and some of the numbers in so we can punch them in pretty quickly. What we find out is by putting these ice cubes into the water, the hot water had this much energy to give up. And that energy in this case was 2637 1.8 joules of energy available. And that's how much energy it had when it would cool the water down to zero degrees. It can keep melting the ice until it gets down to zero degrees. So at one degree Celsius, it would still be melting the ice. What we find out then is there's this much energy it has to give towards that. So we will put that in for right here. And then it's simply a matter of saying, well, that's how much heat is available. I'm going to divide it by 335. And we find out that we can get uh, 78. So I had to pause there for a second. That concludes our notes for today. Uh, we'll uh, see you on Monday.